Hi Andy, um, your practice uh, is one of the most successful places at implementing the Performance Matrix platform um, and is getting really good results with it so um, I thought we'd just sort of get, get some of the insights into sort of yeah like um, how it's valuable for you and, and how you and how you implement it because you, know, you, you seem to seem to have a real handle on um, on getting using it and getting good results. Well, yeah, Mark. I mean, we we use it as part of our um, solution process during our initial consultation. So once we've taken our history with our patients, we then um, we can use that as a tool to, especially those who've had reoccurring pain or want to prevent reoccurring some injury, mm -hmm. we can drop it in as a tool then. Um, you know, often because it's you know very time efficient. Now we've got used to using it. We are doing a, a foundation uh, matrix screen in under half an hour, and yeah. um, we can do it all on the iPad. So the efficiency, because it's an online tool, yeah. um, you just log into your performance matrix site. When we're doing the screening, it's a dead simple yes no, yeah. and then straight away we get a report. From that report, we can even use the online tool um, that you've got now to create our exercise library. Uh, we put the email address in, press send. So now the patient gets an email and this is all under an hour. Yeah. And so they can log in from the email online and get their own exercise they can log on their, their phone exam, or iPad yeah. or tablet. Exactly. Uh -huh. So what they've got is, so what we're doing is giving that power back to the thing. For us, we've got a very, very accurate tool uh -huh. um, in the performance matrix. And what we've then got is we can then send it to them and it all comes in video format for them to do. Yeah. So it's easy for us to use or simple and um, straightforward for us busy clinicians really. Um, but then it's very straightforward for the patient because you get an email and their exercise is just it. Okay, yeah. And um, and so the idea of, the, of actually getting um, that report with, the, with, their, with their impairments, movement control impairments or the uncontrol movements, the weak links on it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how, how do you patients find sort of that report, you know? Yeah, very powerful actually because I think that what it does is it highlights because you've got a nice, straightforward um, traffic light system, mm -hmm. it's very, it's very clean cut. It's very straightforward and very visual. Yeah. So you can what it, what it does is it doesn't take an awful lot of explain, explaining because you've got the dot system, and then where it tells us the sight and direction of the uncontrolled movement, mm -hmm. um, a lot of them can relate to some of those. So it kind of it fits in with their their way of going, and it allows them to understand what's going on in there. Okay. Yeah. And. Um, uh, and from an education point of view of your patients, yeah, like do they find that? Um, do you find that a useful thing for motivation compliance? Um, oh, massively. Yeah. I think I, I think one of the things is that with people people want to know why they've got pain and why they're injured or why they've got issues and stuff. And I think having a report like that just totally fits in with the so they can see hundred percent. Okay. And then that fits in with them understanding them more, so they can yeah allow them to keep the compliance. And um, finally, what about rescreening? Like, how, is the, it, how, how do they, how do you sort of use that as part of the, your um, your whole process in this clinic? Um, depending on who we, it's on an individual basis. Uh, we often recommend that the rescreen is almost essential because that shows us the improvements, and also because it keeps the patient working towards something. I don't think if you don't have an end goal, if you have screen have yeah. a correction program, if your end goal is just being pain free, mm -hmm. well, we don't know what improvements you've made. And I think the important thing and that is... that doesn't stop recurrence either. No, it doesn't stop recurrence. So one of the things that we, we do is kind of highly recommend that anybody that comes in has a screen, that we re-screen within a six to eight week window. Uh -huh. so and that's at the window, yeah. And that's what we try and aim for, the window. And then what that then allows them to do is enough time to feel that they've been good enough to get the time scales in. Because we all accept, accept that people are busy, yeah. you know, so that, you know, trying to get somebody to do it Three times a day is probably not realistic, yeah. but it allows them to do enough to be to get good at the retraining exercises, yeah. and then we can see the results they've made. And so, if they can see the results, they can either say job done on this problem, work on a new problem, or um, it does, or it, haven't finished this problem yet. So yeah. even though I'm pain free, I haven't got control of this. That's my risk for the future. It definitely does, but I think one of the, the strongest things from a clinician's perspective is that one, we're forced to do our job because we live in. As long as they're doing their correction exercises, okay. we have to make them okay. improve. So, but once they have improved, it also helps us develop trust yeah. with that individual, and that trust in the individual then allows them to can carry on and want to see where they can go with their bodies. Yeah, and I suppose it gives you confidence that you know what you're working on is making a difference. Definitely, uh, that's good for compliance. And yeah. if it's not making a difference, it's time to rethink what we're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, definitely.
Okay, well, thanks for those tips. That's um, very useful. Thanks, Andy. Cheers, Mark. Thank you.